Well, hello to all my stamping friends. Welcome back to Ray's Create Cards. This is Ray Henderson, an independent stamping up demonstrator in Morristown, Tennessee. And uh, today is uh, Friday, June the 24th, 2022. So, before we get into today's card, those of you who have not received your mini catalog that will go live the 1st of July um, or your celebration brochure um, that's also going to go live at the same time on July 1st. And this one um, has all the freebies that you can earn from your orders out of the mini catalog and or the annual catalog. It really doesn't matter which one you order out of. Um, you start earning freebies with a $50 order and there are freebies in here for $100 orders. If you haven't gotten them, leave me a comment or send me an email at raisecreatecards at gmail.com and I will make sure you get one. Um, but yeah, um, in going through this and being able to do a pre-order, I was able to pre-order a few things. Um, and one of them, and I wanted to show you this in person, one of them that we have in there are these Pearlized Enamel Effects Basics. And you get the red, and you get the silver, and you get the white. These are awesome. They're beautiful. And so, I wanted to play with them. And I actually took and did some on our silicone glue mat. And I don't know how well you can see this. It's really tiny. But if you're doing an embellishment and to let it dry and then to pick it up and put it on a card, look at that. And it's good and it's hard. It's firm. Um, actually, when I flip this over... Let me get my take your pick tool because it is so tiny. Flip that over. It's perfectly flat on the back. Absolutely, it is glueable. Okay. Then I wanted to know how it would react just on regular cardstock. And so I just played with it very briefly. This is just a rough little sample. And after it had dried really well, I went back to see if they would move very easily, if they would let go of the cardstock. They do not. They do not let go. These are awesome, guys. So you can absolutely order those in full confidence, knowing that uh, when you apply those little drops as embellishments directly to your cardstock, once they dry, they're not going anywhere, right? Okay, let's put that to the side. So today's card, I'm going to use a stamp set that carried over into our new annual catalog, and we've had this for a little while, but it is so versatile, and I thought, I really miss doing something with this set. So we are going to recreate a card that I first did when this was all brand new, Friends are like seashells. There's some awesome little sentiments in here. You have all these stamps, and you even have fill stamps if you want a two-toned um, shell in your design. And the dies are awesome. So, we have a die <clears throat> that cuts out a lot of the shells and the greenery around the shells all at one time. And then you have dies for the individual shells. You got a starfish and, and some other things going on here. You actually get two sheets of stamps because there's that many. Some of them are missing because I already have them pre-mounted on blocks for today. Um, but as far as putting this card together, other than having the card base and my layers ready, we're doing everything from ground zero, okay? The only other thing that we are gonna use on this card today that is not part of this bundle is the uh, rectangle stitch framelits, and that's gonna be for the greeting, okay? So for the moment, I'm just gonna lay this over to the side. There is one more thing that goes with that set, and it is the embossing folder that perfectly complements that big die cut image and it embosses the whole thing. It's called Seashells. It's a 3D embossing folder. And yes, we will be using that today as well. For the moment, let's go ahead and get some basics. So the card base that I decided on was Embalmy Blue. 
and this is not the traditional card base. It is cut at four and a quarter in the width, and then it is scored at five and a half, so it's going to be like a top fold card, okay? And we're going to be doing it in portrait mode. And then the layer that's going to go on top here is a piece of Sahara sand, and I cut this at four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And um, originally, when this set came out, there was some wonderful, coordinating, beautiful DSP that went with it. That's been gone for some time. So we're going to make our own DSP background. And so to get started, I'm bringing in the Sahara Sand. We're going to do tone on tone. And I don't know if you notice, there is a splatter stamp that goes with that. And so we're simply going to take and just randomly add splatter around on the card. Um, it doesn't have to be just perfectly filled in. It doesn't. And uh, I usually just take and kind of turn my stamp different ways. And it takes just a hot minute to do this. This is not what I would consider a real easy card, but it's not hard to do either. It really is not. So we're just going to do some stamping. And I'm always turning my my splatter stamp here a little bit to get a little bit different effects and uh, i elected i actually remade this card um just to refresh my memory because it had been a hot minute since i had uh, used it and i wanted to make sure that my memory was refreshed and that i was giving you an alternative to the original DSP. Whoops. Oopsie. Um, and it does take just a minute. This is not something you could mass produce, but it's a beautiful, beautiful card. Um, this whole set is all about friendship. And uh, we all have really good friends that you know, if we send them a birthday card or something, we want to go a little above and beyond, right? So, we're done with that. And I'm going to... Now, I was using my stamping scrub earlier, and I think... Yeah, it's still a little bit damp. It'll clean that off. And we're going to go back to that splatter stamp later in the video. But for right now, I wanted to make sure it was good and clean. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm so froggy. So yours truly yesterday had jury duty. Yep. Here I was almost to the end of my quarter. And I had literally been praying, you know, ho hoping that I wouldn't have to um, actually do anything or sit in on a trial. Well, yesterday, all day long, I sat in on a trial. Fortunately, it was actually easy. It was just time consuming. And uh, be very honest, it was actually very easy to come to a verdict on that one. So I was grateful and I was blessed that if I had to do this, uh, it came out as well as it did. Okay, on our next uh, thing that we're going to do because I'm going to put this to the side for the minute and uh, we're going to get out that big die and trying to think of where I laid. I have shuffled so much stuff around here and I've got to find the piece of cardstock I had pre-cut. I don't think this is it. That is not it and I'm wondering if I need to cut a piece. I think I've lost track of it. So because this die is so big, you want a piece of white that is four and an eighth by five and five eighths just to make sure you capture the whole thing. And I'm gonna cut another one just real quick. Okay, four and an eighth. by five and five eighths. Uh, 
Actually, I think I cut that one just a little bit bigger, but that's okay. I'd rather have it bigger than too small. All right, that will just make it. That will just make it. All right, let me close this up. This is actually the only die we're gonna use in today's card, and I've got Big Boss sitting here already for die cutting. And uh, I tried to make sure that I had my camera set up so that you could pretty much see everything I was doing. Let me scoop this back just a hair more. Guys, I think I've told you in a previous video that that new magnetic plate has been recalled. Um, it, it is no longer available for sale. I'm still using mine. However, as soon as we die cut this, I, I am gonna show you um, because I decided to look at it really close to see if mine was starting to do that separating uh, bit. And uh, it is, it is. And I'll show you here in a minute what they're talking about. So lay that in there. Let's get this up here. You're kind of seeing what I'm doing, not just every little detail. You see how easy that die cut? Wasn't that awesome? It was awesome. Okay. Let me get a hold of this and start prying it up. And all the little other pieces that, that are in here, they just fall right out. I mean, you don't even have to take your, take your pick tool or um, in any kind of a little pokey tool to get that off. And let me get my pieces off of here ever so quickly. I didn't have a little gift card or anything to scrape the little pieces off with. So I'm just using my fingernail over here to the side, trying to get all of that. Yours truly, I don't know how to um, keep from using my fingernails. All right, so when I was looking at this, was it on this side? Yeah, it was on this side. So very gently, because I plan on using this as long as I can. Can you see that separation where that's starting right there? When I get a hold of that, see how that's starting to separate right there? It's that layer right there. Two bottom layers, I don't see anywhere where it's trying to separate. It's that top one. And not so much on this side, but yes, I definitely see it on this side. So, onward and upward, right? They will figure it out and they will get this took care of in the right way. Now here in a little bit, we're gonna be using the embossing folder. It's 3D. And if you remember on a 3D embossing folder, you have your platform and your gray specialty plate. Um, so just for the minute, I'm gonna set this back to the side until we're ready to use that. Okay, when I very first got this set and I die cut this, um, now see, I've already got something on there. Anyway, that's all right, we're gonna stamp over it. Um, I wasn't really sure how I was to stamp them. And the very, very first card I ever made, I stamped this shell and this shell a little backwards. And I have no excuse for stamping that one backwards um, because obviously there's a little cutout right there that shows you where the base of the shell is. So uh, I'm just talented that way, you know? So for the color scheme, I'm gonna do two of the larger shells in Calypso Coral. I'm doing them in Calypso Coral because I found that it was a good substitute for uh, my original colors on my original card done when it was released. And I'll be showing that to you before the end of the video. All right, so we're gonna ink this up. Now, the card I made a while ago uses the same color scheme that I'm using with you right now, but I didn't stamp off. And the more I looked at it, the more I thought, well, I wonder how it would look stamped off. And I think I kind of like that effect. And so we're going to do the stamping off. And if I can hold my mouth right and get that lined up, at least relatively close, 
without getting my head in the camera, heaven forbid. Um, there we go. I'm just going to press that for a second, make sure that ink gets on there real well. There we go. It's not perfect, but it'll work. All right, let me put that to the side for the minute because we're fixing to stamp off on this one. There we go. And see if I can kind of line this up, sorta, straight, sorta. There we go. Hopefully I got it halfway on there. There we go. I'm not real happy with how far over that is. However, we're not going to start over. We're just going to go ahead and continue on. We are done with the Calypso Coral for the moment. And where you can't see, I'm re-spritzing my Stampin' Scrub. I got out my new one the other day. The one I have always used, I've always had since day one. And it was really starting to get uh, really wore out, wore down. It wasn't cleaning very well anymore. So that one is gone and I do have my new one out. All right, now for this really big one, I'm gonna use Balmy Blue. And I'm not gonna stamp off on the Balmy Blue. I wanted to on the Calypso Coral only because it was so um, intense of a color. And there's all kinds of colors of shells and things that come out of our ocean. However, um, you're probably not going to see one that intense. Okay. So I hope everyone is having a really good week. I hope you are. Um, let's see, I want this one also in balmy blue, and I stamped it backwards the last time, so make sure I have this lined up correctly. This one here can really be hard to know how to stamp it, and when I say knowing how to stamp it, you'll understand better what I'm getting at um, when we put it through the embossing folder because of the way it embosses. Okay, so we've got that. We're done with the balmy blue. That's gonna go away. Let me clean these stamps real quick. Okay, got it, got it. All right, I'm gonna put these to the side. And this one right here, I want to do in Daffodil Delight. I wanted a little bit of yellow in here. And again, I stamped that one crooked. And so I want to make sure I do line up what I call the back side right here with those little curves. We're going to stamp that down. There we go. It could have been a little bit better, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. All right. And then probably the most time consuming part of the whole thing is using stamping blends to color in our uh, ocean greenery. And so I decided to use my light granny apple green and uh, just color the sand. Now, because you aren't taking time to shade and do all that, you absolutely can just scribble on here. And it does take a hot minute. And you're gonna have some light areas and darker areas because you're just scribbling. You may go back over the same um, part a time or two just to get it all filled in. Um, but the overall effect, once all is said and done, is really pretty. It really is. So this is one time, guys, that y'all can color and you don't have to worry about going out of the lines. Um, you don't have to worry about shading or doing anything. So, okay. So yeah, um, I was really hoping 
they called several panels in and I am on panel five and uh, a good friend and uh, someone I go to church with was there and uh, at first I didn't think they were going to call her name and but uh, they did she got called over to sit in the jury seat along with me and uh, then they went ahead and let her go and so as she's getting up to leave she was right in front of me and so just very softly um, I said lucky duck and she just gave me a big old grin I had another friend who was there um, she works for a company that um, does some work for Walmart now, she doesn't work directly for Walmart but uh, she didn't get picked at all. And so she made sure to turn my way as before she went out the door and give me a big cheesy grin. It was funny. It was so funny. And I thought, yeah, you lucked out this time. You just wait. Yeah, and so we, we still have a few days to go. Um, when I get done with this, I actually will call this evening um, there, there's a, a message line that we have to call periodically and see if we have any other court or anything coming up. And so I am to call back Friday to see about court next Monday. <laughs> and it's like, oh, God, please, I've done my time. I've been a good girl. I did my civic duty. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes, right? <laughs> I am going to do my live on Facebook Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. I was not able to do it last Saturday. I had so much on me, and I could not be here to properly prepare for it. And so, I simply uh, canceled it because I knew, I knew there was just no way. And the things I needed to do were very, whoops, were very important. Like they were so important. I wasn't going to reschedule them. So life happens and you deal with it and go on, right? Just do the best you can. So guys, I'm really trying to hurry and do this. Um, I honestly had thought about going ahead and pre-doing this, but I couldn't really pre-do coloring the foliage until this was stamped, and I didn't want to pre-stamp it because then you would miss out on them little tips as to which way to position your shells and stuff because when you just flat cut out the outline, it's really hard to know and it's hard to tell until you put it through the embossing folder. So, yeah, it's a definite learning curve, and... uh I just wanted to make sure that I could give you all the tips and tricks that I could so that you could learn from my mistakes and not have to make them. It's It gets frustrating sometimes if we're trying to do something or use a set that we've never used before. And it's like, well, what's that for? And which way does that go? And what am I supposed to do with this? And so that's why we have videos on YouTube, right? to help teach you so that you don't make the same mistakes. But we're getting there. We are almost there, guys. And my thanks to everyone who sent me a birthday card. They were gorgeous. They were beautiful. And I thought about showing them on video and I thought, well, you know, this video is going to be a little bit on the long side anyway, and so I've, I've elected not to. I was, I was going to do that at the very beginning of the video. Um, not all of my friends make cards, and so it's okay. I enjoy those store-bought cards just as much as I do a handmade card. Because for anybody to think of you and give you a card 
Isn't that awesome? That takes thought. It takes planning. It takes execution. And uh, it's, it's all special. It's all special. And my husband does not make cards. My husband is not allowed in my card room anymore. <laughs> um, it's probably been, a, I don't know, a week or so ago. And he just happened to be in here while I was doing some stamping. And uh, he took one of my uh, stamps that was mounted on a block. And I had a stamp pad that was open. Oh, my heavens. <laughs> He mashed it so hard into the ink pad that there was an outline of the stamp in the ink pad. And there was ink everywhere. Like, I think there was maybe more ink on the block than there was on the stamp. It, it was like, I'm going, what are you doing? You don't do it that hard. <laughs> I was kind of fussing at him. He goes, yep, that's why I don't come in here. And I go, yep, that's why. <laughs> Oh, goodness. But, you know, if he ever decided he wanted to learn how to do it or anything, he absolutely could. I would be happy to teach him. Um, but he's definitely a man's man. I mean, this man is so talented. He can fabricate and make a tool for an application where no tools exist on the public market. Okay. He can do all kinds of woodwork carpentry. He can do electrical repairs. He can do plumbing repairs. He works on our vehicles a lot. I don't know how much money he has saved us over the years because he can fix so much that goes wrong on a vehicle. He is a man of very many talents. Um, so, uh, no worries there. It's okay. He doesn't need to be interested in how, how to make cards because he definitely has a host of talents. Good at math, oh my heavens. I don't know how he can measure and get into the int intricacies of measuring like he can. Um, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. And I have watched him go and, uh, fabricate things and weld things together to make something that did not exist or something he needed that if you could buy it, it was like dearly expensive. Okay. And, uh, so he's, he's saved us so much money over the years. He really has. And I'm grateful <clears throat> and I'm blessed. He's, he's definitely an awesome blessing uh, in my life, so, and he does have a sense of humor, a really good sense of humor, sometimes a little cheesy, like mine is, but, uh, yeah, he loves to laugh, and he loves to make me laugh, and so it's, it's great, he, he's my biggest defender, my biggest protector, um, yeah, you don't want to get him riled up, or, uh, in any way be a threat to me because he absolutely will take care of business but he's a good man he's a very good man and he would help anybody anytime anywhere he would give you the shirt off of his back he's uh i don't know he's just i, I don't know how i lucked out but uh, it was definitely god's gift to me to have him so all right i'm just filling in these little edges where i kind of didn't stamp it just right now can you see what i was talking about yes i should have stamped this over a little bit more on the on this left side but once you color in the foliage it's all good and i don't know if you can tell there are some lighter areas some darker areas there we go I don't know if I have my light down far enough to really put some light on this and kind of move it a little bit. Of course, I've got my camera phone right here in the way, but hopefully you can you can see that pretty good. All right. 
Okay, we have got that. Now it is time to get out the embossing folder. And this, again, is where you need some tips and tricks. So, on the very front of our embossing folders, you see that stamping up logo. Normally, you just open it up and you put this in. However, uh, what I found was if you will lay this... For me, it was easier to come up here because this is the debossed side. Am I right? Yes. This is a debossed side. So I found it easier to flip it over and start lining it up so that it would, obviously it's not gonna click into place, but it will kind of grab it. And as long as you don't press on it as hard as I just did, but, and I'm checking my perimeter here to make sure that I'm lined up all the way around, all my edges, everything is in there as it should be, and then close it, then turn it over. There we go. Now let's get this back out, and I need my gray specialty plate for this. And you always want to feed your embossing folders the fold side going in first. This will not only uh, protect your embossing folder, but it will give you the best pressure uh, right from the get-go. So you're just gonna put that on your platform, no clear cutting plates needed, but because it's a 3D, we definitely want this gray specialty plate. It's a little thicker than our cutting plates. However, as you can tell, it is not hard to crank through. It goes through like butter. Let's put this back to the side. I don't want it to go too far away because we have one more thing before all is said and done to die cut. And here we go. All right, I'm gonna to try to hold this up as best I can. And I don't know if I can show you that beautiful texture, but it just embossed and put the lines and the puffy into the shells. Can you see that? I hope you guys can. But if not, trust me, it makes all the difference. It does not do any embossing on the foliage, which I am so fine with. And speaking of the foliage, I'm looking to see, I don't want any white areas. I don't want like white showing through so any place where I didn't get, I'm looking here, a little bit here on the end, right there. Let's see, any, any place else? So I thought I saw one glaring white spot, but I think, I think that's okay. I think it's okay. Put a little bit more right there. A little bit on that edge. There we go. All right, I think that's good, guys. Now, note to self, I've used that Granny Apple Green stamping blends a lot for a long time. All right, let's put this back together. This is how I store mine. I have a little plastic case and I don't have them like in alphabetical order or anything, honestly. Whatever's in the very front of my embossing folders in my case, I know that was the last one I used. <laughs> and so, yeah, um, I don't have an issue with that. And that's just how I do mine. So let's go ahead and get our prepped card base and our uh, handmade DSP. And let's go ahead and glue this on. And... Uh, now you will notice, and I'm just putting little bits here and there, and I'm not getting down too far right on the very edge at the top or the bottom. You may have a little bit hanging off and that is just fine. No problem there. It's fine. I'm putting a little bit more glue on the shells because they were embossed. And so you're going to have, um, some areas that, um, have, um, uh, recessed places and you want to make sure that glue can 
can uh, take care of that. You know what? I think I lied about the foliage because I'm seeing on the back side here. I am seeing a little bit of texture. It's just not as intense as the... Uh... Hmm. Okay, so it did. I'm sorry. Let me back up. I lied. Oh, my heavens. There is a little bit on the foliage. Well, isn't there? On some of it. Like this one here has it. These here have it. This has it. This has it. But these right here do not. Nor do the little stems in the middle. They don't have it either. Okay. I'm looking. Try to make sure I've got this pretty well centered. Um, move that over just a hair. And I'm good with that. Yes. There is this one that hangs off. These almost do, but not quite on the bottom. But this one right here does. If that bothers you, and let me show you, um, because you may glue it down and forget that that little piece does indeed kind of come off. And if that bothers you, just snip it. You don't even have to particularly curve it. Just snip it. There we go. And it blends right in, and nobody's going to really know unless they really fixate on that one little tiny part, and they're not going to do that, trust me. So we're good there. Okay. And I think that's grabbing hold. Let me get rid of my snips. I should not need those again. And, all right, we're going to put that to the side, and... We are going to get ready to stamp and die cut our sentiment on the outside. And for that, I'm electing to use happy birthday to my beautiful friend. And that is one of the sentiments in there. I've just got to make sure I pick up the right one. Because like I said, I've got all of these pre-mounted. So here we go. So I've got that pre-mounted. And... I'm just going to stamp this right in the middle um, because this scrap isn't big enough to do it twice. And I'm going to bring that down just a little ways and line that up on my grid paper. And, of course, if it isn't perfectly straight, that's okay because I'm going to die cut it. There we go. And I think that's really, I got a little bit of glue on my finger. It could have stamped better, but it's okay. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. So let me close this up. We'll be getting this back out in a minute, but for right now, no. And let me clean that off. I know it's boring to watch me clean my stamps, but honestly, at the same time, I am teaching you, please clean your stuff as you go. Please do. All right, so make sure I don't mess this up now that we've gotten this far. I'm going to put this over to the side and pick this up. I'm going to bring back in the big boss. And we're going to get ready to die cut that. So, again, as I said, I'm going to use this as long as I can use it. I don't know, you know, when those were manufactured, what kind of a gluing system or a heat press system they may have used for the layers, but I guarantee you when the day comes that this separates so bad that I can't use it anymore, I'll be experimenting and I'll let you know if I find something that works, okay? All right, we're gonna get out one of the uh, rectangles the stitched rectangles, and I didn't stamp it straight, straight, so I'm going to have to, and let me, can you see what I'm doing here? Let me back this up a little bit. I'm going to tilt this a little so that as it goes through, it's not catching that whole edge. It's not as rough on my machine. And when you do yours, you do the same thing. Kind of tilt it a little bit so it just catches it in increments and it's not as hard. Now, would it tear up your machine? I don't think so. 
I don't think it would tear it up. However, we want to protect their investments, do we not? And if we know there is something that we can do that will help uh, prolong the life of our equipment, we're going to do that, right? Okay. Bring this out. So there we go. We've got that that done. Let me get my scrap over to the side and put my die cut back in my case. All right. Good, good. And at this point, unless there's something that I'm not thinking of, I think that we're done with this. So it goes back to its home. Okay. Now, what I elected to do, because I knew I wanted to pop this sentiment up on the card, right? And I'm going to elect to put it right up here. And so, what I'm going to do, there's a little something, something on there. I don't know if I splat. Okay, whatever it was, it moved. Awesome. Wasn't moving with my finger, but with my uh, rubber adhesive remover, it did move. So, there we go. I wanted to stamp it up with dimensionals, but I wanted to make sure that the whole thing was really supported because this time I'm not die cutting two and three layers. Yeah, that was a oops. Yeah, can you see that? That really did not stamp well earlier when I was playing. So, but we try not to waste our cardstock. There's two sides, so there we go. So I cut me a piece. Uh, out of the foam adhesive sheet so I would have a solid backing and to figure out how big a piece I needed to cut I simply took a ruler and I started on the inside of the stitching and I went across and I thought okay I needed a little under two and a quarter for the length and I needed it under a little bit of an inch in the width and so I just took my snips and I cut it. Let's go ahead and put that on there. I'm just gonna lay that to where I know it's not gonna show through the stitching. Peel this off. Okay, let me kind of move this and make sure it's kind of straight. My grid paper's not straight. Let's straighten that up a little. There we go. And then I'm just going to put this right up here. Hopefully straight. Uh, there we go. There we go. All right. And that is good and firm up under there. It has got good, good protection. Now, before we finish the front, because we're not done with the front, we're going to go ahead and work on the inside and is this a piece I had cut? Actually, I think I had had one cut that was four by five and a quarter. I'm trying to figure out where that piece went. I've got another piece over here. Let's see. Let me see if this one is four by five and a quarter. Yes, it is. That's the piece I had cut. I always like to have extra waiting in the wings because yours truly can mess up, most especially on a video. Okay, we're going to get back out. There's Sahara Sand. And for the inside, I wanted to use, well, you are unique and completely amazing. All of our friends are unique and completely amazing, aren't they? They all, they all have something to offer that is unique, either in their sense of humor um, or how they analyze things or how they see the world around us and even how they see us. So, let me see if I can get this straight. Oh, I hope so. And am I centered? And okay. Well, we're going down with it. Again, there's two sides if I mess up. Oh, I did mess up. Look at that. I didn't even press it all the way across. Well, poop. All right. One more time. We're going to get it right. Okay. Make sure I'm inked up all the way. Your real light inks like Sahara Sand, it can, it can be kind of hard to see if you've got it inked up all the way. Um, and I think I had it inked up all the way the first time. 
I just didn't press all the way across like I should have. Oh, yay. There we go. That one came out. That one's complete. I'm happy. Good deal. Okay, I'm going to get back out the Sahara sand one more time before all is said and done with the inside of this card. But you guys know, close up your stamp pads, right? There is none of us card makers that have not had an oops at some time or another. Okay, so on the inside, down in the lower left corner, I want to put a little shell. And then I'm thinking that's the smallest one. Again, I'm going to stamp it off in that uh, uh, Calypso Coral. And I'm just going to plop it down right here in the middle. There we go, just like that. And I am really done with this. And then I want my splatter stamp back out and the Sahara Sand back out. And I am going to stamp this off. Stamp that off and then just put a few little splatters down there. And I don't know if you can see that or how well you can see that. Hopefully you can. Okay. There now is the inside of the card. As I designed it, you do you when you're making this. And uh, if you don't have this set, I hope you now have plans to get this set. And if you do, if you would please, I would so appreciate it if you would head over to Raise Create Cards at stampingup.net and uh, shop with me in my online store. All right, got one more to clean here. There we go. We're not quite done yet. Even after we glue this in, there's one more thing we're going to do to the outside of the card. And then I can bring in the one that I had made when this... Um, set was brand new and the one I made earlier today where I did not stamp off the Calypso Coral color and you can decide for yourself whether you like it stamped off or not stamped off I mean, it's still a pretty card um, but I think I prefer the Calypso Coral stamped off alright we are good there Okay, now one more thing. So on the card that I made way back when this was brand new, I took, we still were selling the shimmer paint and the champagne and the frost white. And I simply took the champagne uh, shimmer paint and misted it all over the card. And it was beautiful. Um, but can't get that anymore. Stamping Up doesn't carry that anymore. And so I'm simply going to take the Wink of Stella and cover over the greeting. There we go. Okay. Got that. And then I'm also going to do each of the shells. Just the shells. I'm not doing the greenery. I'm not just going whole hog on it. But I am going to put it down on the shelves. And then, once I have all this on here, I'm going to hold it up. And hopefully, if I can get the angle right, I will uh, attempt to show you how that Wink of Stella looks on here. Sometimes I luck out and I, and I can get the angle just right for the camera. But not every time. So, we'll see. However, I will tell you, if you don't have Wink of Stella, if you've never used Wink of Stella, it is very inexpensive. Um, each Wink of Stella pen lasts you a very long time. And I will tell you this, when it goes empty, you can absolutely take the top off. Add you a few drops of rubbing alcohol, shake it up real good, and you've got more Wink of Stella. I know because I've done it. I saw that tip somewhere along the way in my card making journey. And uh, so when my uh, Wink of Stella finally did go empty, I thought, hmm, I'm going to try that and see if it works. And it does. It does work. Okay. Let me see. 
if I can hold this to where you can see some of that shimmer. But if you can't, trust me, it does add. A lot of you do know what Wink Stella is. You do know that beautiful shimmer that it can add to your card and just make it pop. Okay, guys, what do you think? Do you like it? I love this design. Doesn't mean you will. And if you don't, there are other dies in that set. There are other stamps in that set. We have a whole range of colors you can pick from. Um, you know, even purple. I think purple would be pretty in this card with some purple shells. Why not? The sky's the limit, right? Okay, so way back in the day when I very, very first got this and a couple of the colors have retired, um, so this was the one that I did, and we had Rococo Rose, and we had uh, Seaside Spray. So I did this shell in Seaside Spray. It was a Seaside Spray card base, and uh, I, again, I did use a Granny Apple Green, and then I used some bling on this one. I haven't added any bling to this one because, honestly, with that Wink of Stella, you don't really need it. I mean, truly, you do not need it. Okay, and the one I did earlier today, which seems to have flown away. There it is. Okay, so here is the one I did earlier today, and I did not stamp off the Calypso Coral. So here it is. This one's not stamped off. This one is two totally different looks by stamping off your ink. It's almost like it's another ink color. What do you think, guys? And this one I did do the Wink of Stella on as well. And uh, it's been dry for some time. And so I I don't know. I'm not seeing it in my uh, camera that you can pick up on that shimmer and shine. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you've enjoyed the tips and tricks. If you don't already have this set, or maybe you have this set and you haven't had a chance to use it yet, now you can get it out with full confidence. You know how to stamp your, um, see how, <laughs> see how I did that one backwards? And in person, when you're looking at the embossing, you can tell I did that one totally backwards. Um, and, uh, so on this one, Yes, I got it stamped the right way. Didn't quite line my stamp up perfect, but honestly, do you think anybody is going to notice or care? No, they're not. They're just going to be looking at that overall beautiful palette and go, thank you, thank you for sending me a card and thinking of me. Guys, you all have a very blessed weekend. I hope you will hop over tomorrow to my Facebook Live. Um, it's going to be a little messy. But uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, we're going to delve into something a little bit different. In fact, it's a whole lot different. So, until we meet again, guys, y'all be blessed and you stay safe and know I love you. Bye.